Good morning. It's uh, the 24th of March. Last week of last full week of March. It's breakfast for the master. How's everybody doing? Hey, Dr. Gary. See, Dawn can't sleep. <coughs> Excuse me. Um, let's see. Some admin this morning. Get in the right order here. First of all, uh, after today, we may have a new member of Breakfast with the Master for a couple weeks. That would be Jordan the Bengal. Um, he arrived Saturday and is currently inhabiting my bathroom. Um, and he will get a larger space for the next two weeks, I think tomorrow or Wednesday that would be running around inside the bathroom and my office so if the next time you hear you hear the cat in Jordan the cat he's yeah keyboard pause or uh, he doesn't meow that much but uh, he's very very playful a lot of perfects yeah a lot of purrs he's a happy happy big beautiful boy anyway yeah John's on top of his game. No, I thought that was okay, Don. Anyway, um, and I'll, I'll give you guys pictures. He was He's much prettier than his pictures, which is kind of nice. So anyway, that's uh, that was the addition to the uh, Blackthorn family as well as the Morge family. So um, let's see. Yeah, Lucy is not just psyched. She is. Mama Lucy is. Actually, I take that back. Everybody in the family has had a wonderful lift because if you've ever had an animal the unconditional love is uh, is so nice and so <clears throat> you know my only chore has been to make sure that everybody can cycle through and get their time because as a 12 week old kitten he needs you know too much stimulation is not a good thing but you, but that again um, every everybody's benefited from spending time with him and having him just you know it's a beautiful thing so anyway, that's the first thing. Second, second of all, uh, don't forget, for those of you that have not, if you've talked to me, don't worry about it. If you haven't talked to me, um, if you're not continuing, that's fine. But this is the last week for you guys to hold on to your spots. Uh, there are people in waiting. Um, I'm going to take a poll. It's going to be another part here. I saw my specialist on uh, Thursday and Friday down in Phoenix. And um, they would like me to change my schedule somewhat to lengthen my life, is their opinion. And um, would you? how would you feel if one of your days was changed? Same time, different day. I haven't made a final decision yet, but um, the other thing is uh, I'm likely to shrink. Hmm? Yeah. Um, I'm not going to give out the day yet. Um, I have to think about it more, Al. Um, <coughs> um, uh, the other thing I'm going to do is um, I think... Yeah, I do think my health is, is more important. If I'm not here, there's no classes, guys. Um, and it's taken me a long time to come to that decision. And and uh, we we may do something different. So, um, but it'll be same. It'll be the same time, and there may be one day change. Um, overall, um, I think we will freeze membership at what we end up with this time around, and uh, no longer admit. I think we'll start closing off membership. And people that want to be serious can stay. People that uh, have to leave for whatever reason, I understand. Um, but uh, our, but we wanted, what we want to do is get more and more advanced here.
So I hope the groups stay together and uh, we can get to more and more advanced topics. Um, the last thing is um, you've noticed the last two weeks that we've had problems with go to, is it possible to close the site membership but keep this? No, Jose, if you're not a premium member, you are not welcome here. That was part of the deal in the beginning, and it is it will be enforced here. Okay? You need the midday sessions. I do not have time to teach the foundation. Okay? That happens in the midday sessions. And if you don't want to learn the foundations and want to take the shortcuts, that's a shortcut to hell, buddy. You're going to be losing money out of your you-know-what. So I have no time for that. Well, I'm, I'm glad you've learned more from me, but let me say it again. I do not have time to teach you foundation material here, and you need foundation material on a regular basis. Okay? If I spent time teaching foundation material here, you would not learn advanced material here. Hi, Igshan. How are you? So... Not only do you have to be a premium member, you should be going there and or reviewing the tapes regularly. It's, it's for example, it's like, hey, you know what? I like dessert a hell of a lot better than I like the, the meal. But if you just eat dessert, you're going to die. If I show you the really difficult things and you haven't done them, yeah, and there's been some great, mid, mid, great material midday. The people that are here that are doing really well, if they hadn't attended midday first, would not be doing very well. Mm. Well, I'm not a Kobe Bryant fan, but okay. Let me read what Timmy says. I, I'm a Michael Jordan fan. That's why it's called Michael Jordan, our little kitty. But yeah, you always need the, the basics, the fundamentals. You have to, you have to keep them sharp, period. Jose, you know, we're going to get in an argument and you're going to make me angry, so stop, okay? Listen to me very carefully. You have to be a premium member, and if you're stupid, you'll just pay the price and not review the tapes and, and not attend. But you have to be a premium member. That's an absolute period. Okay? Don't take it any further. Don't make any more comments, or I'm likely to just delete you. That's always been the condition. It's always been part of the contract. It's not. We're not going to talk about that anymore. Okay? Now, last part. Everybody's noticed that we've been having problems uh, with uh, go to meeting. I, I certainly noticed anyway. The last couple of weeks, we may go to go to webinar. They tell us to go to webinar is more stable for what we're doing. Blah 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 blah. You lost sound now? Oh yeah, no. Two, we it was actually one day and then it was the next day, the very next day. So we talked to go to meeting. It happened twice last week. Then we did some tests with go to meeting, and they said, well, you know, go, go to webinar would be better for this. It was like, okay, fine. So we'll we'll see how this week goes, but we may go to go to webinar. Um, it does two things. More important, hopefully, it'll be more stable, and because the, the last week was almost unbearable. Um, and number two, um, it it makes chat a lot easier for me. It may not make it easier for you. It just means I'll have to repeat what you guys are saying, but that's okay. I need to read what you're saying anyway. All right, so. Any questions on what I just talked about before we go forward? Okay. So I'm going to go through. Oh, I do. I do. I'm sorry. One more thing. There is. I don't. I don't know if this is the case. Uh, just so you know, the sound loss doesn't turn up on the recordings. Yeah, I know that. But yeah, I know that. That's because I'm recording directly on my machine. It's really a pain, Dawn, because I know if you guys, if I just keep going, you guys will hear it, but see, then it's really a pain to watch. So it's very frustrating for me because I know it'll be fine in the recordings. Dawn can hear me yelling and cursing, right, Dawn? Let me see. Ah, oh, God damn it. <laughs> anyway, um, 
there is a chance. I don't I don't think it's going to be the the case, but there's a chance next Monday and Tuesday that I will have to pass on doing this. There's a personal matter that I may have to attend to. I'm going to try and do it, try and work around it, but we'll see. No, no, no promises, but let me just tell you in advance, and I apologize in advance. I don't think it's going to be the case. I think I'll be fine, but um, life happens, right? Anyway, let's, uh, let's rock. So we're going to talk today. I need to go through a little bit of, bit of, bit of physics quickly. Rebecca, are you here? Oh, you are there. Hi, sweetie. Thinking about you all weekend. Um, I thought I'd do a little physics for you. So, you know, we know price fluctuates, right? Yeah, or whatever. And a lot of times we can hear the wind blow in our hair. I'm going to try, Rebecca. Don't worry. Uh, a lot of times we can we can hear or feel the wind blow if we're really in tune with price. If you haven't yet, don't worry. You will. You can just all of a sudden you'll just feel the wind change. You go, hey, you know it's getting a bit chilly in here, or man, things are really heating up. Now, we've talked about one-dimensional lines, and that's a horizontal and vertical line, okay? But you also hear me talk about three-dimensional and four-dimensional lines. Can you see them? And, of course, they do actually intersect at some point and if you can see this which is the two-dimensional this is the three-dimensional and if you wondered where maximum excursion comes from you can see it right there it all comes together right here all right now yeah confluence sure now we rely on knowing slopes and we can find a slope on any circle and we could treat price in our mind like a circle and think about the slope and the tangent at any point on a circle will give us the slope I'm not gonna make you guys solve the math for a tangent I'm not gonna make you do high-level algebra But this is, these are the tangents at any one place. And this is very much like price. And if we just take out the ball, it's the same basic idea. Is everybody with me? All right. Now, we've talked about grounded state. And this is... Can any tell, anybody tell me what state of the market this is? The grounded state? Keep going. Let's make it really grounded. really grounded, not that grounded. I mean, those all actually work, but we talked about it, you know, we'll, we're, yeah, crystalline, thank you. Thank you, Gary. Crystalline structure is as grounded as it could be. Now, not every molecule, not every atom can be crystalline, can be put into a crystalline structure, but some can, okay? But even those can actually go to an excited state and emit food emit photons okay it's the nature of 
the beast. Um, there, I don't have an I don't have an image for you, but I wanted to have an image. I also this weekend I got to watch a tape. I I I belong still to some pretty cool physicist groups, and one of them is an astrophysics peer group. And I can't I don't go. I haven't gone in a long time. But um, there was a very exciting paper that was just put out, or recently put out, and um, then there was a um, a lecture given by the person that put the paper out. And basically, um, there's a uh, telescope up in the North Pole, and because the air is so constant there and uh, and quiet. In the same temperature and no pollution and no light, etc., um, they're able to do work there that they can't do anywhere else on the Earth. Now they could certainly do it on Hubble, etc., but the Hubble's too busy. But they'll they they have several other telescopes going up, but we're talking about five or six years away. So they've tried to do this work uh, on the North Pole, and they've actually found that they can do it, and it's basically. Um, They've now found that they can measure gravitational waves on a quantum basis. And what they found was that, you know, when they look at stars far, far away, they're, re they're really looking back into our past. Not into the future, into our past. And by measuring the gravitational waves out there, compared to here, and we're talking about there's some there's some controversy. It's but there, there are a lot of most physicists say 3.5 to 3.6 billion years ago. However, there's some people that are measuring things out at 15 and 16 billion, so we're not really sure where. But we do know this, and again, I'm I'm a I'm a Newtonian, so I believe only things you can measure and only things that you can correct correctly use math on. And and what what we found now is these waves changed dramatically early on in the Earth's period, and the theory goes like this and it fits the math and the math comes directly from the last Newtonian does anybody know who that would be well I'll give it to Richard Feynman how about the second to the last Newtonian Albert Einstein yeah Gary, Gary guessed it right um, and what Einstein said in his theory of relativity was that there was gravity, gravity could be warped, and therefore there could be gravity waves that had, and I am I'm going to tie this right into trading, that has frequency. And you can measure the frequency and you, can, you will actually be able to take the frequency and tell because time is warped or gravitation is warped, you'll be able to take the frequency and measure forward or backwards in time and see exactly what's happened to the objects that the gravitation acted on. Waves in terms of sine waves um, these are not okay. I can't. Well, I can dry. I can. I can do the Shane thing. I'll, I'll give it a whack. A sine wave would look like this, right? Um, gravitation waves don't necessarily have to have the same peak and trough. That's the way to say it. So. They can look, for example, like this.
or they could expand. That's a that's a contracting one. They could expand. Now, if you're looking back in time and they contract, you can actually measure. This is the frequency right here. My drawing's not perfect, but and you can see that this is actually called inflation. That the frequency is actually increasing. And the waves are getting larger as we come back into our time. So as time goes backwards, the waves are actually contracting and the frequency is actually smaller. And that's actually what we are now seeing. And the current measurements, uh, I need to erase them. The current measurements um, look like this. Somewhere between 13 and 16 billion years ago, <clears throat> there was a huge inflation of the universe in something like a trillionth of a trillionth of a trillionth of a second. The universe went from the size of a grounded state molecule or atom to the size of a current solar system so like our solar system and then it continued to expand after that at once it expanded it had it it had almost an infinite frequency but once it expanded to the size of a solar system it slowed immediately and has had a steady and even frequency since so we'll see if that holds up but the math works it fits Einstein's theory of general relativity perfectly it's the first proof of gravitational waves um, and it's the nice thing is it's not one of those things that says that most physicists are out there doing that says well this fits fine as long as we put in this X factor for dark matter it takes dark matter out of the equation which is kind of nice so most people are just going to say okay thanks that was interesting All right. so let's go back to being at rest here we are at rest okay we can expand by getting input we expand to the outer ring by giving by getting input we expand by giving input we contract does that make any sense to anybody so if we give out a light photon we contract if we get one we expand okay think of it this way Jose if we give off energy we're going to get smaller if we, if we get rid of energy explains adrenal exhaustion that yeah Gary I'm there burnout yeah and and then if you get extra energy of course then you expand right yes so let's think about the market for a second if you give off energy what happens if you give all your energy away you exhaust and then what happens and then you contract right you contract and you go to either a range or a crystalline structure right because you've run out of energy a grounded state right if you suddenly get more energy and how would you get more energy external input and what would that be new buyers or sellers exactly right news hedging information right and suddenly you get what out of that expansion right movement okay so what everything we do here is really grounded in physics uh, you don't have to know the physics we don't have to go through the equations or anything but it's just 
the same the world is the same throughout so we'll talk about this today um if you know if you want to get fancy when you go back and look at the tape you know i don't want to get too too far into this but here we are here's an electron and proton and these are the possible energy levels or how far we can expand one hydrogen atom okay okay and if we absorb a photon then we can ex excite out to one of these next states depending on what we absorb but if we emit a photon then we're going to go back to one of the grounded states farther and farther in expansion and contraction so you can take a look at that and maybe it'll help you uh, last this just help should help you think about free radicals is right here yeah um, this should help you think about it this is the market and it's really a material if you have an input in this case it's light coming in you will get excitement or movement and of course we know if we have a prism for example or a mirror those are two examples where we can actually measure based on the frequency coming in what the frequency coming out will be which is a nice effect for us to use and I looked for um, I looked for a picture but to be honest I ran out of time this morning before class <coughs> so uh, let's see if the tape ends there oh no it doesn't end there sorry one more this is the output of smashing protons together this time I thought I'd bring a nice colored one now this is a Feynman diagram Richard Feynman the last Newtonian and uh, what we can do then is take a look at each one of these is a cork or a gluon etc different parts of the atoms or protons that came together as they explode apart okay and the problem that we've always had is that you can it is beautiful and I'll tell you I have millions of pictures of these and they're absolutely gorgeous but um, people spend tens of thousands of hours in each one of the each one of these incidents saying okay I see this particular see this little curly cue right here I see this particular signature and I know that that's a plus gluon or I see this one here that comes out spins spins backwards spins backwards and I know that's a cork Gary says interesting thing that it's symmetrical over there well it has to be because it of course keeps frequency now and we'll see this in a second because somebody had a breakthrough we showed the picture once before but um, uh, I want to say where are we in March I want to say December somebody had a magnificent internal breakthrough it's one of those things that you like me at two o'clock in the morning I wake up and go oh wait I figured that out somebody actually that was paid to sit and do this a real you know a grunt physicist so to speak had this idea and said you know if we looked at this in a instead of looking at this in a two this is a two let's think about this this is a two-dimensional image is that correct this is how we generally chart the markets right somebody woke up in the middle of the night and said you know if we looked at this in three or four dimensions instead of two and then graphed a bunch of these together we might have a much better idea of what these particles look like and so they took I think this is a thousand incidents from the same collider using gold protons and graph them all together now they had to do it by hand so that's why it's so perfect and I don't know if it would not end up perfect um, they just don't have the capability yet they're just starting to program the capability but this is what it looks like if you take up a, a thousand of these 
and graph them together on top one on top of the on top of the other. I've got I've got it turned backwards again. The top should be up here, but I haven't figured out how to flip this darn thing. This is a altitude hedron amplitude hedron. Sorry. And so you can see, as Gary said, they are very symmetrical. And now, can you see the signatures in here? And can you see how it flowers and how beautiful it is? But when we talk about you know two-dimensional and three-dimensional, and we talk about price flowering, this is exactly what's going on anywhere in the world, no matter what we look at. So Rebecca, I thought I'd give you a flower today. How about that? As we move from its center point out, then that is time. Yeah, I, I'm going to say it's time, Shane, but I have to tell you the truth. This is, even though this is zero, okay, and the input's coming right here. Are you with me? It has positive time and negative time. So when these particles collide, some of them go backwards in time. Yeah. And in fact, we think, we think in the last two months at CERN that we've seen black, many black holes right here. Shane said, I wouldn't mind doing that with a few trades. I wouldn't mind doing that with a lot. How does that work to go back in time? Um, I don't know that I have time to explain it, Al, but basically, as these blow up, remember, we have, we're have we creating two types of particles, Al. We're, we're creating um, positive and negative particles, and the negative particles are anti matter and antimatter actually has the act apt the opposite slope in time so they're the same particles but they're like a mirror image but they're backwards in time you know you saw that in star trek the anti antimatter machines and stuff it's really where it came from it's actually a lot of their stuff is actually fairly grounded in in science which is pretty funny uh and we might actually you might actually see anti antimatter pushing rockets in your lifetime. So, especially now that people that are non-scientists or, or non-governmental people are, are running uh, the space program. We'll see. It might, it might accelerate quite a bit now. So, um, I need to, I'm, I don't, I'm not going to discuss the first trade, but I need to show you where the median lines come from. Okay. Can, can we agree to that? And I don't even know that we talked about the first trade. So this may be just a phantom trade that you guys haven't seen. But I can't set it up without showing you the median lines. Okay? So I'm just gonna I'm just gonna parse back. Um, let me let me do this. Just to remind myself where I was. Uh, there we go. <clears throat> All right, so so you can see price gapped up on a Sunday. <coughs> and then I use an A down here and an A at the gap. And then started to mark median lines, not one median line, median lines. Because I wanted to make sure I don't do that many trades this far off after a gap. Now the gap held and that made this market very strong. Um, and we talked about different 
For example, this would be very much like Einstein's gravity waves that have have frequency, but the okay here's a, I'm going to introduce a word the periodicity is is changing. We're contracting, but the frequency is holding. So take a look. You can see that the swings are getting smaller. Can you see that? But take a look. The frequency, even though the swings are getting smaller, is still holding. Follow me? Okay. So I'm drawing multiple. Oh, by the way, by the way, Ixan, I I will have an answer for you. I'm glad you're here today. Um, the swings are getting smaller, but the frequency is holding. So as I watch and I say, is, is this thing contracting into nothing? The gap's still holding. We're making higher lows, but the frequency is still working. Is it a range or is it a trade? Well, this was a tough one, okay, and I'm just going to leave it. You can chase it yourself or or just forget about it. This is not, this is just a tough one. So we come outside, and remember what Andrew says. If you recover, we come outside all three of my median lines, and you recover, then you've gained, regained the median line as long as you don't disturb the sliding parallel. And it's actually a sign of strength in an upsloping median line. So we regain it. And as long as we don't break, I'll do it quick and then we just move on. The sliding parallel. You have a sign of strength. So that's the long, okay? So we'll just leave it at that. And then it's just a matter of boxing in and boxing in and boxing in and boxing in. Then we go vertical. So we went from contracting amplitude to all of a sudden vertical. And when we're going vertical, we are emitting photons, so to speak. We're going to the, we've gone from the highest state. We're now at the highest state of excitation. We can't hold on to that. What happens at, as we emit a photon, what happens? To tie it back into our physics. Yeah, we got to contract or lose energy. And that means our amplitude is going to contract. Okay, it doesn't mean that this is over. So here we are going vertical. And you can see there's not even any place for us to move our stop, right? So when it gets to the top of our frequency, pitch it. And there it goes into contraction. Make sense? Okay, um, let me read what you said to Rebecca. Hang on. And uh, okay, so our amplitude, our frequency held as our amplitude increased down below, meaning our waves got smaller and smaller, yet our frequency held. Uh, let's go here. You can see our waves are getting smaller and smaller but our frequency held. Then as we go vertical here, our amplitude or the size of our waves, we're now going vertical instead of contracting. We're going the opposite way and that's like emitting a photon particle, which means that we're then going to go to a lower state of energy. We're going to contract or go to the less excited state, which is exactly what we do. And it's right, it happens right at the frequency. Okay, does that work? Well, Rebecca, if you, you can always send me an email. With a small account, will you use ATR 
to set a stop. Everything I do here, I would do with a $10,000 account. If I couldn't do it, Igshan, I would um, not trade this methodology. It's amazing how Dondr Dr. Andrews quantified the permutations of the pitchfork. Um, well, you know, if you think about it this way, he had the best graduate students. One, one second, I'll get it. I'll get it. Except. He had the best graduate students in the world. I'm kids from MIT um, at the, you know, and they just after the turn of the century, 1920 to 24. Um, those are the pick, you know, pick of the crop probably in terms of mathematicians and or physicists. And um, if you're going to have some people locked in a room thinking about it, that's probably them. And they just went over it and over it and over it and over it. Yeah, and they had some pretty incredible insights. Um, oh, Ixon says when it goes vertical. A absolutely. I mean, if you want, when it, up in here, I mean, if you want to put in a price floor, you can, but I don't have a problem with that, but that's style, and only, only you can decide where that's going to be. Um, you know, maybe you want to put it underneath here. Um, maybe you want to say, okay, I've got... Uh, when it goes vertical 553 I've got $1,000 in the market now extra so I'm only going to get back 500 there's lots of ways you can do it was it Dr. Andrews that ID the pitchfork use are you asking me if Andrews invented the pitchfork Rebecca No, it was him. Um, he had a student. He had a student in the forties that had, that was having trouble with action reaction lines. They actually invented action reaction lines in twenty to twenty four. It's a misnomer that um, everybody else, including uh, two people that are selling courses, talk about meeting lines invented in the twenties. It's actually not true. They used action reaction lines. But in the forties, he had a student that was really having trouble. That was a good student, and he went spent some time th thinking about it and he said you know we can do the same thing just using simple mathematics so uh he says after reading some of andrew's work it's interesting how he gives credit to babson and others oh listen he wouldn't even he wouldn't even walk down this road and you know that's why i always try and give credit because andrews did such a good job um he would not have walked down this road without first of all have running into, to be honest with you, BJ, without running into Gan and hating him at a dinner party and, and just saying, you know, what a sham. And actually, um, you know, here's this little, this 24 year old. Um, and Gan was, you know, the man at the time walking around at these dinner parties. And he, Andrews was just going for the free food. He wasn't even trading at the time, although his father owned a trading house. And uh, <clears throat> he decided that Gan was, uh, you know, a huckster. And the things that he was trying to sell for $10,000, you couldn't come and spend a half a day with him on a Saturday for $10,000, and he'd go over what he did in the market um, and show that his, you know, one by one, his 45-degree line was the key to any market, et cetera, et cetera. $10,000 back then was lots of money. And Andrew said to him, 10K in the 20s. Yeah, absolutely. And Andrew said to him, you know what? That's horse bucky. And he took out a piece of paper and a pencil. And he said, look, buddy, if I just change the graphs, if I, if I change the x-axis axis and the y-axis, your 45 degree angle, angle turns into a 38 degree angle. How's that work for you? And you didn't solve anything. But in the fight, something stuck in the back of his mind, which is that the angles are relative. The angles have to actually relate to price. And so he talked, he heard Roger Babson talk, and Rob, Roger Babson 
you know, we've looked at action reaction lines. Roger Babson was doing something that looked very much like sine waves to try and predict economic activity. And Andrews put the two together and went, you know, if we could find a way so that if you changed the X and Y axis, so you can track or expand the X or Y axis. So doing exactly this, if you put in a GAN line, a 45 degree GAN line to do this, it blows it up. But if you put in a median line or an action reaction line, they move relative to the axis. And the frequency actually doesn't change because the frequency is relative to price. GAN's work, the frequency is relative to his axis. Do you follow me? So he put the two together. He put Babson's ideas together and the parts that he hated by, from Gann that were bothering him and came up with action and action lines after talking to Babson. Then he came back. It took him four years. Then he came back to Babson and made the demonstration. And then Babson basically became a partner. And later on, Marischal would finish it all by coming along in the 1928, late 1928, would finish it all by putting it all into quality graphs and, over, and giving them graph after graph after graph after graph after graph. And they learned how to use this and trade this. So for the most part, it was scientific before that. But once they got Marischal aboard, who was a trader from the Chicago Mercantile Exchange, that happened to hear Babson talking about the work that he was doing, not giving Andrews credit, but that was okay with Andrews, but it really was Andrews doing the work. But it, it changed Babson's forecasting work tremendous, tremendously, of course, and then they made a trading run that I think might be unparalleled. They turned... Joseph Kennedy Sr., in 18 months, they made $450 million for him, which in money in 2008, I think is the last time I did the equation, that was $13.5 billion. That's an amazing run. Yeah, that's not hey, is it? Not, I have to tell you, um, I, you know, I don't know what, uh, I haven't done the work on on. I, I should take. I'm going to take the money that I made last year. Take it back to 1920 money. Reverse it for inflation and see what it turned into. But that was a heck of a run that he made. So anyway, so let's get back to this trade. So now it, we've emitted our photon and we're back to a Joseph Kennedy Senior. So it was JFK's dad. Everybody says they made their money with whiskey. They, no, no, they made their, they made some money with whiskey. But they made their fortune. Andrews and Babson made their fortune for them in the stock market crash. And they stole a fortune from J.P. Morgan, who was trying to fight them. <coughs> but then became a disciple. But we'll, we can talk about that another day. It's in It's in one of the DVDs. Anyway... Price, watch what happens now. We've emitted our photon. Price, you know, just meanders around. It's, it's a great, great time to relax. Now, we need another input or we need to change frequency. And so, let's go right here. This is where this trade is going to start. That's what this gray was. I wondered what the gray was. So, here we are. Sorry, right here. Here's our frequency our amplitude damped down okay and now we start to break out of the top which is where we this is where we took a break so just see see what was behind it but now you know what the median lines are okay and it's unusual for me to leave these on this long but I was watching this market took a nice chunk of money out of this market then I was watching this market to see what it would do as it got up here 
unusual long for me, by the way, in natural gas. Um, and we're flirting around with the top of this range and can't seem to stay down inside of it. So I'm going to call this a plateau. You can see our advanced multi-pivot line. And here's our box. And from here, are you guys ready to follow for a trade now? We're going to stock one, and it's a, it's a little, I like it. It's a little weird, but I like it, okay? So as we come through and break the box, that, for me, cements this as MLA. I've already got MLA there, so never mind. Okay, and it might be an odd place. But we've gone, the reason why I marked it is because we've gone from a consolidated or resting state and now we're expanding again as if we've got an input of energy, now we're expanding again, okay? And you can see we go nearly vertical. We go to the green or the, at this point, the widest on the upside median line and we get a forced pivot we turn right at the green median line do you see that okay we can mark this and say in a weird way that this is an overshoot of one of the frequency lines correct it's one way to measure you can ignore it or you can use it. It's up to you. And, you know, I know that's not the beginning line that I used the tagline this morning, but remember last week I was using the tagline, you know, it doesn't matter where you get it, use what works, right? As long as you know it works. Okay, so we've got nested median lines here where they're shifted. Okay, we've overshot the blue, but price turns at the green and watch it retest the top so this is a beautiful look look how nice this advanced multi-pivot work, line works as we turn and make a low put it out there now it immediately gets tested let's widen back out and this is why you guys have got to draw these now watch we're dribbling now we're making nice new lows closing on the low mirror bar inside bar lower bar on the high retest that multi pivot line to the tick and come off make a new high for the new low for the move which allows me to call this MLB retry you can see the pullback again we're retrying it again um, why don't you draw the horizontal two bars back as those lines also look like the force C on the green you can it's art. You can draw it anywhere you want. Sorry, this may be a silly question. There's no silly questions. But what is a forced pivot? Is this an intentional push up to trap longs? No, a forced pivot means that price turned at a median line that you've drawn from quite a ways back. So it turns at the prior frequency. And you use that as a pivot. It has, it has nothing to do with somebody manipulating the market unless they're a median line trader but price ran out of energy where it's supposed to run out energy, of energy which is at the extremes and so we call that a forced pivot okay so it has mathematics behind it so as we come down here's our nice pullback and you can see the frequency of the pullback is pretty nice 
once we retest the median line and uh, I know I don't think I don't think we want to be that zoomed in actually we don't okay and now we're retesting the green we stopped at the green up above everybody with me yeah we we made that up the force pivot that we made that up here that's not a Dr. Anderson thing, but it's something that we use to describe Dr. Anderson's work. So we're at the green, we come down, now we're testing the green. Notice that we overshot the blue to get to the green. Everybody see that? Now here's a quirk. We're going to overshoot the green to get to the blue. See it? So they're handing off back and forth. Now you can measure it. There it is. It's the same. You can use it. You ignore it. That's up to you. Right? Dawn especially should like this. So if you draw multiple pivot lines and multiple multiple um, median lines, and they're working in different areas, it's you know basically price is shifting off of one onto the other. And if you can use it and make money, then absolutely use it. If you, can, if you can't juggle more than one, then don't. So we come down to the overshoot down here and turn hard. And one, two, three, within four bars. I'm now going to mark this as C. And I'm going to put in this median line. So now I've got, now why, would, again, looks like a wash. No, I, okay. Here, I'll leave it there. Now, why would I draw in a new median line? I've already got a median line. Well, update frequency, yeah, because these median lines are so long and so old. You just want to make sure. And we've, we're passing back and forth here. So can we consolidate frequency into something? Because we just slid from one to the other. Can we consolidate frequency into one probable path of price? How about that? So, yeah, we're, up, we're freshening up frequency. Okay, we use the slop to our advantage, but then afterwards it's like, you know... Can I find a probable path of price that's related to this BC area? Finish your uh, typing, Jose, in a while. Oh, you want to see the A pivot? That's the plateau here. This is where we, okay, we went vertical and then we slowed down. And when we tried to break back into that slowdown area, that plateau, I marked it as A. And that was the low. That's was as low as we could get back into that area once we had started to get excited again. Okay. Okay. So we head up, we head up, we head up, we head up. New highs. Median line. Median line rejects. Median line gets zoomed. And you can see us go vertical. No retest. Sign of strength. No chance to get long. Period. If you're not long, I'd already taken my profit. If you're not long, tough luck. You just lost. Well, you didn't lose. You lost, opportunity lost of 25, 26 handles. But really no chance happens especially in this market and this is a I even went to 377 instead of 89 or 189 because this market was wet and wild but still no chance so I'm watching and you can see one more time forced pivot price runs out of energy right at our new median line which consolidates the frequency between this green and this blue into one okay and you can see how that how well that worked you see price turn right at the upper parallel. That's where Andrew says price should run out of energy. 
possible end of excited state yeah it's expended you know at least at that area it's expended as much as it can and now it's got to contract and it'll need a new input of energy so I noticed this as I started to watch this live as I was watching this live as we get the force pivot we close on our low all right and the next bar we close on our low we've talked about these before these are like those little beep beep bars right that's what I'm spending my time doing this morning is drawing in these red dots <clears throat> Have we, you guys remember seeing these before and it's like it doesn't matter whether something's going up or down but I see these maybe you want to call them signature bars I see these and they just they're sticking in my mind and I, I don't know how they're gonna play out or how they're gonna be meaningful but I keep seeing them so let's see what happens here so now you know where the purple median line comes from and how it played out and how it, now it's been tested and it for it forced a pivot right at the top and at this point I made this ML1 and again one two three bars that close on their low four bars that close on their low okay this bar doesn't close on its low makes a new low makes a new low close and you can see price turn up and I'm gonna mark this as the first drive to the downside and now price is moving back up and continuing to move back up is everybody oriented? This is part of the thought of what I had about this group going forward is that I want to go to more advanced material and I don't want to have to keep going back and teaching people to orient themselves so I need you guys and I want to close off members if I need you guys that are staying to be on your toes and stay up with the work so that we can move to new things so as we move higher we get this same signature bar do you see it even though we're moving higher now we've retested our nice multi-pivot line just as before we put our advanced multi-pivot line out and sure enough price comes right back and tests it So these are, you know, as MasterCard would say, priceless. And it turns right at our advanced multi-pivot line, doesn't it? So let's see if anybody can pick this up. What is the relationship between this advanced multi-pivot line that I laid out right here at the top and the f our upper parallel? There actually is a relationship. What is it? My head scratching. Ah, Gary. Two dimensional versus three dimensional. Two dimensional versus three dimensional. Or two dimensional versus three dimensional. Uh, we don't care. This is this is physics for dummies, Don. Don't worry about it. There's there's no. This is just big picture thoughts, and it doesn't matter if you get them right or wrong. It's just thoughts. Bit like a handoff to a new media line. Say, so, yeah, it is very much like that. Okay. So can I remove this? Have you looked at it? Do you get it? Do you see it? Now, if you use this in your trade, I don't care if you use it, but. This is why advanced multi-pivot lines are so important because 
this line is the 2D line of this line. And this line has been proven. So now it's sideways 2D. That's right, Jose. Exactly right. All right? All right, so now we're back on back in point here. We can see these little lines continue to happen. I don't know what they're going to do. Oh, I missed. Right, here's one that does it, opens on a slope. It doesn't close on it. Here's another one. And another one. And another one. And now we're taking out our box. And a lot happens here. A lot happens here. We close outside our median line. Okay. And then we make a new low. Do we see it? But a close back inside the median line. So we put out a sliding parallel. Does everybody follow that? And now that's just straight Andrews, and we've been banging on that for three weeks, which is if price slides outside. I know, I know Dawn at that point is just spitting up blood, but price has come outside the median line. We're going to put out a sliding parallel and say, okay, we'll give you this one excursion outside, but as long as it doesn't take out this one excursion, we still love you, okay? And now this is a sign of strength once it closes back inside. So here's our sliding parallel. And take a look at the bar that makes the sliding parallel because it's very fascinating. Makes a low, but closes on its high. So we're going to put out the 2D advanced multi-pivot line, right? Do you see that? Okay, so now where are we going to get our three-dimensional relationship what's the three-dimensional version of that we could say it's a sliding parallel but there's another way to express it the slope line that's what is it we connect this low to this low and project it forward and this is also the 3d expression of it right so in a weird way it's a maximum excursion that's moving away in space from our direction. Do you see that? Now are the, you know, these little frequency lines that I draw in, are they starting to make some, I'm, I'm pulling another veil back. Are they starting to now make some sense? Do you see where they're coming from? Okay. That, this is where we're going to go in the next six months and 12 months as we close off the class and I don't have to keep repeating myself and do Jose and do foundation work because the foundation work has been done I can start to go to a different level it feels like I can see potential energy later down the trade good Jose so let's see where that goes All right so let's watch and see what price does as long as it doesn't violate the sliding parallel we still are fine let's think of this as a we talked about this as a rotating three-dimensional tube right and price is going to trade inside of this trough or tube and as long as we stay and you can see we tried to get outside and didn't and it closed again above here so when we close the third time up here I'm willing to make this if I got it ML2 so we've got ML1, ML2, and let's see if we can stay in the tube, so to speak. Now, this is an interesting bar for me, and can anybody tell me what this looks like? Yeah, fulcrum, setting up a teeter-totter, right? And you can see this is price pushing down on this fulcrum. And then it finally gives way. Okay? 
And if uh, it's almost like action, reaction. Can you see that? And then we come out of the hole. But we come out of the hole orderly until we get to this bar, and then we start to just take off. So somewhere in here, I'm just trying to help you feel the wind blowing your hair. Okay, somewhere in here is a fulcrum, and I just used these bottoms to try and give me frequency. It doesn't matter. Okay, I'm not going to trade off of this. This is just, I'm, again, I'm trying to help you guys feel the market. At this point, you can feel the market is swinging up. You can feel when this bar pops right here. It's right here. It looks like it might still be a cascade lower. Do you see it? Does everybody see that? But when this bar pops, oops, all of a sudden, there's a whole shift in attitude in this market. It's almost like you got to go put a sweater on because it's cold. Or you got to take a sweater off because it's heating up, however you want to look at it. And look at the bars afterwards. So it's like the slingshot right there. Can you see it now? But remember the thing about fulcrums and seesaws. Yeah, it's a very early read. The very the interesting thing about fulcrums and seesaws is, okay, what happened was, we finally got enough pressure on this side to turn this side up. But if we get enough pressure on this side, we'll turn this same fulcrum where? Down. Yeah. So there are two-way streets. Or they can be. All right. So let's see what happens with this. We've got our upper parallel here. We've got our median line here. And we've got our sliding parallel here so are you saying that bar with the circle shot up price um that's where i felt price let me back up uh, let me back up that's where i felt price accelerating okay does that does that answer your question to put it in my words i could suddenly feel it i don't have any hair al but if I did, my hair would be blowing in the breeze. Now we come up and watch what happens. A lot happens on this bar. You can't see. Okay, as I told you, I'm not really sure where the where it falls in here, but it's somewhere in this bar, Jose. And again, I could not tell you exactly where it was, so what I did was I used the frequency off of these two lines. You have to pay attention to what I'm saying, so we don't, we don't have to keep going back. Now, pay attention to what's going on up here. We are going vertical now. Do you see it? Look at the bar sprint. And we go vertical, but suddenly we get one of these, and we've had, I don't know, nine or ten of these. And all of a sudden, we get another one, and it's up here. See it? Just like this one. And watch what price does. We get another one. And we get another one. Oops. Look at those signature bars. <coughs> so now I'm going to mark this as ML3. And I'm going to put in my new median line. And it's going to be a red downsloper. And there's something else, however, though, that we need to make sure we don't miss, which is we connect this high and this high. Okay. And 
This is important because we've got an advanced multi-pivot line here. See it? Which is two-dimensional. And where's our three-dimensional relationship? It comes from this eye connected to this eye. Unless we have a different frequency, right? Somewhere in here, we have to have a three-dimensional boundary. If you think, I'm sorry, I'm using my hands. If you think about price rotating, there has to be a three-dimensional boundary as well as a two-dimensional boundary, whether it comes from here or somewhere else. Okay? As we shift in and out, as we phase in and out from 2D to 3D. All right, so we're at the top here now for the moment, and we're pulling down. You can see... These bars that keep closing on their bottom have my attention, and we're quickly coming upon our seesaw. And the question is, is there enough pressure on this side to keep the fulcrum up, Jose? Follow me? Interesting that you felt the acceleration on the upswing that spawned the fulcrum, but are you also leaning one way? Um... I am actually, Gary, because I cannot get these out of my mind. And I feel how strong this is, but I, I keep feeling these throughout this entire room. I'm like, uh, and then when they show up again, I can kind of tie them into over here. Now, this whole movement is not, I mean, we do stay in a downsloping direction, I guess, and we do break out to the me a bottom of the median line but then we pull back but here's how I'll tie it all together for you Gary we pop through the median line with this excursion right and we've got this nice three-dimensional corner now that I reveal the whole thing I'm glad you asked the question now that I reveal the whole thing can you see what's missing up here or what's happened? Here's our overshoot and here's our undershoot. This is, not only is it a Gopian, but the same thing that happened down here off of this frequency line just happened here, which caused a Gopian. And you can see, take this bar, Turn it upside down. This is the bar that turned everything. Turn it upside down and you get this bar. Do you see that? Overshoot, undershoot. Three-dimensional, three-dimensional. Okay? Everybody with me? There, it's as if the, sh the range shifts, yeah. Uh, hang on, I missed one with Dawn. If you're willing to stay up, I'm willing. The tube is twisting. I like that, Gary. And as above, so below. Exactly right, Don. All right. I like it. The tube is shifting. So now let's watch. Here's the question now. What can I do with this mess? It's like, it's almost like a, a twisting, moving serpent in three dimensions now, right? What are we going to do with this? Do we want to get long? Do we want to get short? And what are the markers? So let's follow it out. And again, this is a, I don't know, maybe I was going to say weird. This is a, I think this is a interesting example. It's a creative example. It's a, it's an unusual example, but we can learn a lot from this. This little frequency right here. Do you see it? I just grabbed two lines. It's the same frequency as this parallel frequency down here that came off of two lows. 
There are no coincidences in trading in physics, okay? This frequency equals this frequency. Now we come down and uh, what about the red frequency added to the bottom? Uh, no, the red frequency added to the bottom is the lower parallel. The higher red uh, does, well, if we go up there, it'll come into play. Or if we get down here, it might come into play. But right now, it, it can't play inside because it's up above. Okay, it's it's out. It's in a different part of the tube. The tube twisting is exactly Gary is exactly the right analogy. We've this this tube is it's, think of it like a serpent. Hello, oh, Mama is going to check out young Jordan. He must be okay because she's going to spend some time with Jordan. There we go. Okay, so now this thing is is twisting, and the serpent has moved down okay so we do have a an upsloper here this one but it hasn't it doesn't come into play yet because we have no place to anchor it or use it so we've got this down sloper here and as we twist down we need to stay with the twist so we're twisting down so we take this frequency and move it up here and why do we move it up here? Because it works with these. To be honest, I grabbed this line, connected this line, then checked the slope, and they are the same. I went, ah, here's my frequency. One second. Are you bringing him for a walk? I would also suggest you give him a little wet food, darling. Jordan's going for a walk. Bye, Jordan. All right, so as we come down now, and we're twisting with, let's call it a snake or a dragon, as we're twisting with this thing as it comes down. Again, I see my signature bar. And we're, can we orient yourself? Where are we now? Anybody? Yes, we're at the red median line. Where else are we? Yes, we're at a bunch of closes. We could draw a multi-pivot line, but where else? We're through the teeter. Where else? We're under the fulcrum. Where else are we? There's one other place we are, which is very important. Red median line and what? And the, there you go, the purple, right, the purple median line. Okay, we've just busted the purple median line, haven't we? And we're right in front of the sliding parallel. Um, you're ahead of me, Timmy, but just wait. Um, yeah, I could easily have just pop this frequency and put it here. But to be honest, I wasn't thinking about the downside until we broke this. I mean, I... I, I saw these and just put them out there and then measured it, but I really wasn't thinking much about the downside. I had a median line, and I, I thought about Hagopian, but I'm not sure about a trade at this point. It looks... Let's look at it, Timmy. It looks rangy to me right here. The, yeah, the range that, that if I'd done it, it would... It wouldn't have done anything for a trade anyway, but it looks rangy at the moment. So I need something to tell me that it's not a range. You follow me? I'm I'm more than willing to trade if I have the light go on, but if I just because I'm drawing lines doesn't mean I'm willing to trade. All right, so we're at the red median line. We've just taken out the purple median line, and right in front of us is our sliding parallel, which is, we said we'd fall out of love. 
no offense to the purple median line, but we'll fall out of love it with it if we break below the sliding parallel, yes? Everybody have that? Okay. So we come down and test it, and now we're on the serpentine or backside of this median line. So the red median line has been tested and is working rather well. And you can see we're on the back side, right? Jordan has returned. Heck of an energy point hit. Yeah, this is this is about as good an energy point as you can get, isn't it? Now, let's see what it gives us. Again, we're right back at the serpentine or backside test of this purple median line. Do we see it? And we've got our signature bar. Everybody see that? We've got a love fest going on here with the kitty. Yes, a signature bar of the beep, 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 beep. See it? Okay, it's, it's banging inside my mind. With all those signature bars, is that sloping? Is that um, tipping of the hand? I Well, I kind of think so, Gary. I kind of think so, and now I'm, as we go back and we try to get back above this median line and cannot, I do two things. I put in a red sliding parallel off of this to see if we can get above it, because maybe this is an inside sliding parallel. The market is being hit with supply in those signature bars. Okay. It's a term that I don't use much, Timmy, but yeah, okay. Because, I, you know, I don't like to reference volume, and that's what that implies. But, yeah, I'll take that. For some reason, there are definitely sellers. Even on the way up, there are sellers. It's very weird. And it stays in my mind. So, we're on the serpentine side, or the back side, of this upsloping median line. Okay? We've got another one of our close on the low bars. The, just wake up one of those, right? It's like a big hammer hitting each time. That's right. But it doesn't go down every time, even though the big hammer's hitting. <coughs> so now I put in a sliding parallel to this red downsloper, and I wonder, are we going to work in this three-dimensional tube, or will this become the ceiling now right here? And I also copy this frequency, which is this frequency, when this line hits and we get this close, because this test does test the median line from the backside, but this one tests and closes on its low. So I'm going to use this one because of the close. Even though they're double tops, I'm going to use this one. It's also the width. I'll anchor the frequency to this one, and I'll put out my sliding parallel from this one. Everybody with me? Well, I know a lot's going on here. Well, let's see what happens. Is everything okay, Mama? Do you think you'll ever get her to school? Okay. Sorry, I'm just checking in with the family. Okay, so let's see what happens now. Now that we know it's Jordan. What, just so you know what's going on with Jordan. Jordan's getting fed. Jordan had a walk around the house, got out of his bathroom. Now he's being fed. Hopefully Lucy will soon be going to school. That's just my prediction. Okay. Now back to the markets. Ah, 
Here's our outside close. Aha. Can you, can you see me putting together the pieces? We're not getting above this median line. We haven't closed below the sliding barrel yet, but we're not getting above the median line. And we got this beautiful signature bar to the upside at the energy point, but we're not getting above the median line. And the next bar tries and closes on its low. I felt the wind on my hair here to the upside. Now, and look, we're below it again. Okay, you have a good day at school, sweetie. Now, we're below it, and I can, I can feel the air blowing to the downside. So, if you guys can hear uh, a cat in the background, my apologies. That's uh, Jordan saying, where did everybody go? And um, you may have to live with that for a couple sessions, but he will soon have run of the house. Anyway, so now we're, let me go back to it. If I felt the wind on my hair as we came up here now, now I feel the wind of my hair. I actually feel my skin. You know, I get goose pimples here. I can see this. I know the next bar. I'm ahead of the game here by at least one bar. Can some of you see it? What's going to happen? It's almost like the up bar in the circle fulcrum was the addition of exogenous energy. Okay, yes, I agree. This is where we put energy in, and this is where we're taking energy out right here, right? And in this case, taking the energy out to try and push it up didn't work, so this makes this what? Not just weak, what else? A failure. Yeah, this bar was energy in, and this is the failure of that energy, which means it's not going to be expended to the upside. It's going to be expended to the... The energy is going to be expended. Where is it going to be expended? Yeah, to the downside. So can anybody see the next bar? I know I showed it, but can you see it now? Can you feel it? Can you feel it? Now, it may take some time for you. Okay, Jose, it may take some time for you to get to the point where you can actually see it in advance. But Gary says, I can see and feel it. Okay, so it may take some of you, and BJ can, some may take some of you some time to see or feel it, but it will happen. You will begin to see or feel it before it happens. But most importantly, it's that you can deal with it when this happens, Jose. When this happens, you need to go, okay, I have this down now. I understand it. Because now, what's happened? We put energy into the market. We failed. It's getting expended to the downside. And we've blown through our sliding parallel. And it's Andrews 101, right? So which side's in charge now? Yeah, the downside. So we can cross off in terms of, you know, the seesaw's turned. The sellers are in, are in shape, okay? So now, um, this is what has changed my trading, drawing the lines and moving it up to see up close. Yep, ab absolutely, BJ. And, you know, and I, and I know you just finished a wonderful trade, so. You got to get in here. And look at this bar and know it in context and see this bar and if you can't see the next bar at least when this bar prints you have to understand the context the moment it is unfolding ah it's breaking through you live Jose you'll be saying oh here it comes it's breaking through the sliding parallel the sellers are winning if it closes below the sliding parallel I know that the sellers have won, and this is the key spot now right here. These double tops that were a retest of the upsloping line, that's the end of upside energy. Does everybody follow me? 
because we can't go any farther unless you guys are in. Jose, you in? All right. Now let's watch. So <clears throat> as a trader, my job is what? If I feel that and I see that, what's my job as a trader? Yeah, find an opportunity. And ultimately, BJ is right. I, you know what? If I've gone this far and I see and feel it this well, my job is to make the trade. That means I have to find the opportunity and exploit it. Okay? Not just sell at impulse. There's an opportunity here, but we want to exploit it, which means we want a good, a good entry with good risk-reward and a good stop. Okay? So, we're swinging back. <coughs> Is that a bad thing? Should that, okay, it's a retest. Should, if we swing back, yeah, should, you got to get in, right? Should this confuse us? Well, Don, I'm going to ask you. Gary and Don both asked the same question. Which one? Where the heck do you want to trade? Well, where do you want to trade? I'm open to suggestions. BJ says sell at the red downsloper. Timmy says, yeah, red downsloper. Okay. Purple sliding parallel as powerful tool. Okay. Well, if you slide, if you if you if you're gonna sell the oh pur, pur, oh you want to sell right here. Okay. Red parallel. Okay. So I got a lot of red par parallels. So if you're thinking about the purple, and okay, now I've got one at the frequency line as well. If you're thinking about the purple, that means you're trading at the market right now. If you're thinking about the red, you can put an order in. If you're thinking about the frequency, you can put an order in. It, ah. Hang on. Don says, it's the same trade because the slope is the same, the stop is the same. What about that idea? What about that as an idea? That's not the stupidest thing I've heard yet. So let's see how that plays out. Remember, these slopes are handing off, okay? And we showed that in physics, right? When we looked at the amplitohedron, I'm not going to put it up, but you could see as it expanded, it had layers, right? And, and this is expanding. So in a certain sense, we're not sure which level we're at. So I'm using my hands. I wish you got, you know, I almost wish. I'm not doing it. I refuse to do it. I'm not, I, I'm going to quit before I do this. But I also, I almost use, like feel like using a webcam so you can you see my hands. But this is expanding and we don't know which layer we're on, but we know it's expanding, okay? But we do also know unless we're wrong, which means it's going to cost us a stop, that we're somewhere in here is the, the cell. We just don't know which expansion layer it is, whether it's right here, or right here, or right here, right? Does that make sense? These are those corners in the amplitohedron. Okay, so let let's see. There's lots of there are there were lots of ways to skin this cat. No offense, Jordan. Don't listen. Whatever gives you a test retest would be safer, said Jose. I'm okay with that. If that's what you want, Jose. So what I started to say is there's lots of ways to do this. And if you want to test and retest, cool. If you want to see a bar that fails, cool. If you want to put an order in at frequency or at a sliding parallel, whatever, and you have a stop, cool. 
Now, let me do one last thing before you make your decision. I put in a line <coughs> right now is when I put it in. And it's this pink line. Do you see this across the way here? A rose line, I guess it is. And it looks like the balance line to me. Because look at the closes that end up on the swings above. Look at the closes that end up on the swings below. And here's where we accelerate to the upside and test and accelerate and test and then fail. So we've got one last piece of evidence right here. Okay? So now we have a balance line, okay? So, all right, so everybody can orient themselves and decide what they would like. Dawn wants a backside of the purple. And then I'll show you and then I'll show you what I chose. Anybody? Including I want to buy another bar. That's fine too. Whatever you want. Gary says I want to buy another bar. Okay. Anybody else have any inclination to trade or you just want to watch? Pink, okay? Backside of the thick magenta, okay? Pink, or red, sorry, okay? All right? Backside of the thick magenta. I hadn't thought about, you mean the, this? We'll put it out there. I'll go and think market could move suddenly. Petra says you're going in, you're going at the market, Petra? So at this close, okay, purple sliding parallel, okay, impulsive Petra says Don, say that three times, I like that, all right, here we go, here's our next bar, well, crap, well, somebody's in, Petra's in, impulsive Petra, now we're on the serpentine of the sliding parallel and new low close for the move. Eh. Gary and I and Dawn might be locked out, huh? And BJ might be locked out. And I think there's a couple other people in there. Yeah? So we bought another bar. Petra's in. Shall we buy another bar? Or has the train left the station? Still an energy point coming. Okay. Still like the E point. Okay. Let's see what we get. Excuse me. I'm dropping. I'm so excited I'm dropping stuff. I love this. Up. Petra. Sell at the energy point without a retest. That's what I say. Okay. Petra, you're looking like a star here. Next bar. You know what? I see this bar. It closes on its high. And gosh darn it, I'm going to do exactly that. I'm going to put my order, take a look, basically at the energy point, And look at all the closes that are the same. Can you see, or the highs that are the same. Can you see them? All the way across here. I'm just going to put my order there. And basically, let's go through it. It's the same as sliding, as trading against this red downsloper. It's the same as trading against this pink sliding parallel it's even the same as sliding sliding against this thick pink or the median line isn't it or even the rows it gets all those and be, and it, and my problem is it is shifting between two three and ed it's a it's like a serpent i can't wrestle to the ground so damn it i'm going to the energy point and i gotta hope that as this thing rotates, it rotates around this energy point. Otherwise, I'm not going to get in. Do you think there will be enough range on this trade? Oh, yeah. Sure. Watch. Action, reaction. <coughs> 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 
<coughs> excuse me, major failure to get up to the upper purple Hagopian. We're going to go at least here, but maybe further. All right, so let's go back to our entry. Stay with your uh, cursor there. Okay, let's go back to our potential entry. So price has been sliding to the right, not making new highs anymore. Yeah, we're, we're range trading at the moment, aren't we? And we, we want another. Seems at that point it can line up in like a mini crystalline structure. Yeah, well, yeah, I think if we get up here and, I, and to get up here, we're going to need, and this bar is the first clue right here. Take a look at this bar. We're kind of horizontal. Look at this bar and think about this bar. It's like another injection of energy. They try and stop the downside move. Can you see it? And if they're going to get to here, we're going to have to have another injection of buyers, aren't we? And if we're right, it's going to have to fail. And the energy is going to be spent to the downside. If we're wrong, of course, we're just going to get stopped out. Does it, do everybody get that part? We're going to get an injection of energy. If we're wrong, we're going to get stopped out because of it. If we're right, it's going to be that injection that fills us, and then it's going to fail and be expended to the downside. Now, I know this is talk you have, you're not going to hear in the midday. I know this is talk that we probably haven't talked much about here, but this is where we're going for the next 6 or 12 months, okay? This is what makes big trades. We're still going to make little trades, but every once in a while, we're going to have the opportunity to make a big trade. And it's going to make sense before you put the trade on. All right, so we've bought another bar. Gary, you and I, Dawn, uh, BJ, Pan Pat, I don't know who else. We're buying another bar. Petra's just sitting in the catbird seat. Petra, I'm going to give you this stop right up here and just say that that's where your stop was going to be. Because it makes sense. Al's up here as well. Okay, so here we go. Okay, we swung up here, and we're at the back side of this upper parallel. Now, remember, when I talk about energy point, I talk about five bars out, okay? Five bars either direction. Davis says, I'm in right now, okay? Now, Jose wanted what? Do you remember, Jose? You wanted a test and retest. <coughs> right? Did you fall asleep on me? So price has got its two shots of input. You can see the buyers come in. We've got new energy coming into this market. We're at serpentine. Now we're at frequency. Don, where do you want to get short? <laughs> what are you praying? <laughs> Backside purple. Oh, upper purple? Or the big fat purple. Uh, crap, got to go. Well, Gary, you're right. You you know what? You're getting in right now. So just keep that thought, and I'll see you in uh, an hour. So let's see what uh, the market gives us. Originally, yes, but I'm prepared to move down to the other one with you. Okay, I'll, I'll allow you, as you watch price unfold, you, of course, can take clues and make logical changes. So I'm willing to sell here with a stop above all these tops and, of course, our, our, our teeter-totter, but most importantly, these double tops right here. No, no. Now I'm in.
I'll wait for the test and failure at the at the back side of the purple. That's what I waited for. And then I went, okay, great. You could have been in on this bar. You could have been on this bar. Either one. Whichever works for you, that's fine. But this trade is this trade is this trade is actually this trade or this trade. I just don't want to miss it. That's why I'm trading right here. Is that enough separation? I just wanted to make sure, Al, that it's not so much that I wanted separation, and this is. We only need three ticks, okay? So, yes. Um, I just want to make sure that I don't miss the trade. All I wanted on this bar is I just I didn't want this bar to just take off and close on its high. And when it didn't close on its high, when it closed in its center, I'm all good. That last bar's job is to make new lows. Well, this swing, this needs to be the end. We need to be done. If Dawn, if you get filled up here now, I think we're in trouble. But that's what stops are for, right? So no matter where you chose to get in, and Petra's still fine, if we take out this area, that's my opinion, game's up. But I'm going to give it some slop, some room. We're using three big figures in the natural gas as our stop. And you can look, it's 2.4 is the ATR, so of course we got to be at 3. Well, look at the ATR. Again, it's a 377, not an 89, L. Okay, so we've pulled back because it was so volatile. Look at the bars. I mean, we have to use, look at the size of this bar, but look at these bars. We have to. we got no choice. Or we can't play. It's all right if you, you, know, if you look at it and say, too volatile. I looked at the 89s and went, oh, my God. And the 189s went, Jesus, I can't trade this. Went to the 377s and I went, it's really still volatile, but I guess if I go to 3, I could trade it. But if you go to 3, you got to be looking for, you know, 12, 15 handles, big figures. All right, so this bar, what's happening to the energy that was put in? And it was all energy that was supposed to be spent to the upside. What's happening to it now? It is being expended. Where is it being expended? Okay, Shane wants to sell a retest of the red now. Okay, um, Al, I have to actually tell you that I'm incorrect. I was in on, I'm telling you right now that I was in on this bar. This would be a test and a retest, but I was in on this bar. I put my order in where I showed you, just to be correct. Well, how about this, just to be honest. <coughs> okay. Where is the energy being expended? Can you feel the wind in your air, in your hair now, if you have hair? I mean, I suppose some of you probably don't, but can you feel it now? Can you feel which way the breeze is blowing suddenly? To me, this is suddenly now one-sided. Look at it. Okay, we get one more new try. But remember, each time we get one of these, and we stay within the down-sloping tube, it's like an infusion of new energy. It's like, thank you very much. Have some more. Okay? See the move lower? And in fact, that's one of these. I'm going to give it one of these. So I put on an advanced multi-pivot line. Now we blow through prior lows and close again with our separation bar. 
See it? Now I've had our signature bar. Now we're even outside of this little squirmy wormy. And can you see the energy being expended? Now, if you're nervous, you could cut your wrist by moving your sliding parallel. Um, I don't think I used three. I think I went down to 15, but you could, you know, you could do this. If it lets me. Oh, fine. Be that way. I don't know, something like that. <coughs> I use a subset of yeah, uh, my original. Come here. My original. All right. And the moment we break through the low, see it? If you want to, but you are you are close to price. I mean, these are wide bars, but you're relatively close to price. Are you break even? No, but you've cut your risk, right? I didn't, but you can, and you, you know, we're talking about people with smaller accounts, and this is really volatile stuff, okay? I don't want you to blow up. You've done your work. You're in. The, okay, maybe you can cut your risk by, 50, you know, 150 bucks. That's a good thing, right? All right, so once again, same thing, right? All right, so now we're testing the lower parallel, our purple lower parable, parallel, not parallel, parabola. We've blown through the red median line with no problem at all and retested. We zoomed and retested. Testing the purple. Still looking for lows. Well, there's an interesting bar. So there's, Andrews says, could turn at the lower parallel. At this point, we may wonder, uh, should we have had a profit target here? Well, let's look at it. It really wouldn't have made any sense, would it? If this is what we were trading for, it really wasn't tr worth trading. So let's see how price deals with the uh, reversal. Uh, further up, and now we're on the back side of our frequency line. You don't have to like it, but it's happening. Price fluctuates. Touches our frequency line, and it's like an electric wire. Yeah, this would have been another chance to get in. And by the way, same trade. How about that? Uh, so, David, you did get in, or Shane, I guess it was Shane. You did have an opportunity to get in, and if you missed it, you could have got in on the frequency line with the same stop. If price closed over the frequency line, what's the thinking? The thinking is that my stop is right here. And maybe your stop's right here. No. Game's over when you get stopped out. If you start playing that game, you'll find every chance in the world to call game over and take your money and run. The game's over when you get stopped out, okay? Because I'll tell you what, I can tell you a story about every one of these bars. Jose likes this trade better? Okay, well, take this one, Jose. That's fine. I like being as close to the bone as possible, but if you like this one better, that's fine. I know Shane likes this one better, but I like this one better. I like to feel the wind change. More data? Yeah, but less, uh, Jose, less chance that you're going to come up and get here. Significantly less chance. You do get here sometimes, but less chance. Okay? And if you think that this move up means that you know more, the truth is if you do the statistics, just as often this means the move's over and you get stopped out. So price will fluctuate, and this is certainly the same entry, and it has the same probabilities, but it also will also stop you out, just like this will stop you out, okay? They're just trades. The market has no memory. How about this bar? So we had another infusion of energy. 
We went to an excited state. How did the ex energy get expended? To the downside. And again, another signature bar. See it? All right. We come down here, make a low, close with good separation, put our advanced multi-pivot line out. We're below all of our upslopers, and we're down below the median line of the red downsloper. Our stop's all the way up here. Could you elaborate a moment on how you defined that last signature bar, please? I'm just saying it's, it closed on its low. This one, the, the, this one, it closed on its low. That's all, David. It just closed on its low. I'm looking at bars that basically close on their low. It's saying, oh, here we go again. Throughout this whole thing, it's been kind of the, the theme. All right, so now we come down and make a low, close on our high. Orient yourself. This is our frequency line off of the prior low. And here's the lower parallel of our red set. <clears throat> Has the purple median line bottom come out of its range once before? No. First time we've been down here. We put a sliding parallel in under the median, but we haven't been down here. So let's see what we get now. So as we come up, if you want to, Jose, we can do this. If that's what you're thinking. Is that what you want, Jose? So there's our sliding parallel. And we'll if we break back in, Jose's in love again. And we've got our red median line, down sloper. And basically we're at an energy point. Let's see what happens. Serpentine of the median line on the back side. And remember, we've got five bars out. So here, here we are playing at our energy point. Okay. We bust it to the top, close on our high, mirror bar, one, two, three, four. Still playing, five bars. Leave a high. When this happens, you can now draw this advanced multi-pivot line in. See it? So now we've got a high and a low. Can you see the box? We must have a pullback to build the box. We cannot use the box until the bottom breaks. Does everybody understand? We build the box, then we use the box. We build the box, then we use the box. We cannot move the stop above the box until the bottom breaks. Do you follow, David? Okay. So we watch. Okay, so now we're at that energy point. How do we deal with that? We accelerate through. Okay. Now, when we break through and close below our frequency line and our lower and our median line and our prior low, now you can use this top, David. And this is just I just I'm doing this for observation. Take a look at how much we're leaving on the table, okay? Just visually. Follow me? The good news is we've got a profit. We're going to have to leave some on the table as we try to get in. Okay? We've got about five cents in this. Searching for lows. Now we make a low, close near the high, and even take out or playing with the prior low, take out the prior low to the upside, take out the median line. Stop, double tops, take that out. No follow through, so we'll call that a top. It's a lower high. Break through the median line, retest the median line, back at the prior lows, test the prior lows. Break through the prior lows. Now we do it with some gusto. Go ahead and use that secondary high. Did you save much? Yeah, you saved some. 
size of the stop at least. Looks like a Z lazy Z. Yes, it is. If you had a stop, it is. Yep. And we might start teaching. We don't, we quit teaching those in the median in the midday session, but we may start teaching those here. <coughs> it takes a very trained eye to know when to trade those lazy Z's and when not to. All right. So now, again, take a look at what we left on the table. Can you see the size here? Now look at the size here. We're leaving more on the table this time around, aren't we? We're still locking in profit, but you know, not worth it. Jose, you want to just you want me to just take you out right here? I will. Oh, okay, Jose, you're out at six fourteen and a half. Um. And we'll see how that works for you. Maceo says, energy is expanding like those gravity waves. Maceo, you have it exactly correct. Now watch. And we're searching for a high. Double tops. Come back up. And look at this bar. Well, no, you don't get to get out at the bottom, Red Buddy. Sorry. Okay, look at this bar. All this energy, and we close, not at a low, but pretty close to it. That's a heck of a bar. So let's put our advanced multi-pivot line there. You with me? Because that looks like it's important, doesn't it? But remember, natural gas also gets kooky. So maybe we're going to kooky period, but let's... Let's, let's mark this one. Now we get an inside bar with a lower close. Okay, we're happy with that. We've got our box. See it? Everybody see the box? We can't use it until we take out the bottom. So we take out the bottom. Now let's take a look at the stops. Look at, like gravity waves, with inflation, we're leaving more and more and more on the table. These boxes are expanding. Can you see that? Now, this stop is leaving. Are you ready? Look at, look at it. This stop is leaving more than 12 cents on the table. That's a lot of money. How many of you like to make 12 cents in a trade? So we're risking. We've got, let's see, we've got 8 cents in here locked in, but we've got 13 cents on the table. That's tough trade management for me. Well, Don, you know what? That's tough trade management for me. And I'm thinking about it as I mark the box and see the low, I go, wait a second. And I put these lines in and I say, these are increasing. <coughs> the dynamic risk reward needs to be mentally tough. Well, I think it's starting to turn on its head, Shane. What do you think? What do you think, Don? It's getting to the point where I've got eight handles in the box locked in, but I'm risking 13. I'm not sure I like that so much. So I need to find a logical way to get out, right? Now, I'm not going to go out at the market. I don't, I just, I don't work that way. So I take a look at the market structure and what do I have going for me? I got a couple things. I've got a sliding parallel to the red. And you should have these marked out in advance. And here's our, remember this, undershoot, overshoot from the prior structure on the way up. Do you remember that? This is the low of that undershoot. Everybody remember that? This is the impulse that started the entire move up. So this would be filling the mountain right here. 
Does everybody understand that? In fifth grader parlance, we'll be filling them out. So well, I've got so much on the table, and the stops are getting bigger and bigger and bigger and bigger. I'll either take, I can think about either the red sliding parallel, or I can think about filling the mountain. What do you think about either one of those? <coughs> Excuse me. <coughs> They're pretty close to the same. I just went horizontal. I said, you know what? This is right in front of me. Just hit me with the profit stick, please. I'm not going to change my stops. You know I never change my stops. But as I put this one in, I went, oh, you know, look at the size of these stops getting bigger. And now I think about dynamic risk reward is upside down meaning inverse risk reward, I need to, where's my, pro, instead of trailing, I need to find a profit target. Because trailing, these look like they're going to continue to get larger and larger. Do you follow me? Okay. So let's see if that works for me. I mean, you can just get stopped out. It's not the end of the world, but next bar, thank you, Jesus. Now, either one would have worked, sliding parallel or horizontal. Now, I could lie to you and just say, I got that extra whatever pips that is, but I, you know what? I just was, the first thing that made logical sense to me was the prior low that caused this whole thing up, which was the mountain, a mountain fill. Just get me out. Well, we'll see if it's a gray out. Maybe it drops 500 points from here. Next bar turns. I mean, it looked great here. I don't really care. I'm out. Looked great here and made some new lows. Then got ugly. So, I don't know. There might have been another way out, but I just wanted out. Now, I don't. Again, this is not about, we're, right now we're not in a period about, hey, you know, the razzle-dazzle of the trade. This is more about the inside work. Can you get more details to the times when you take profits early versus the time when you let, when you take you out at your stop, please? Well, Don, in this, okay, I can tell you in this particular case, it's when when logic dictates, Don. You know, logic dictates for me to pay attention and take an opportunity, and also logic dictates for me that you know my profit idea no longer works. And in this case, it was to trail stops. I had a minimum profit target of lower of. Uh, I think I was going for the. I think I was going for double the range off the top of my head. It was significantly more. And I was just going to trail to it. And if I got stopped out, I got stopped out. However, what logic dictated was that I was leaving more and more on the table. And at some point, I became less than one-to-one. -one, and at that point, it's time to find a way that makes logical sense. And that made logical sense because it was the prior low or it was the sliding parallel of this red either one when you said you were three big figures it is your entire fund full leveraged all in or just a percent um, actually um, this trade is one-third yeah Petra by the way that was probably the perfect entry. So you expected price to accelerate to the downside much quicker than it did. I did, Don, yes. I did not expect the swings. So let's go. Let's do this. I did not expect the swings to get wider and wilder. So we talked about natural gas does that wild thing every once in a while. And it felt like I was starting to get caught up on those, in those wider and wider swings, or as we talked about, the the quantum physics gravity waves 
as they get wider and wider or narrower and narrower. But yeah, I expected an accelerate. As we put in more energy and it failed to the downside, I expected us to fail and, and go vertical. And Dawn, we never went vertical. <coughs> the perfect entry because you could have, have lost the opportunity of a big... Yes, exactly right. Petra got the right got the perfect opportunity because we we might not might not have gotten the swing back that we did for all the rest of us to get in. And Petra's just still using the same stop. So okay. I hope this was interesting. Again, um I'm gonna think on it, but I think it's likely nice to see a trade that didn't make target and how to manage it. Okay. Did did I did I explain enough for you, Don? You get it? Why I cut and ran? I'm still going to use logic to get out. I'm not going to impulsively get out of the market, but the the mark the market um, the temperament of the market changed, and it certainly didn't do what I was thinking, which was go vertical. It never went vertical. Did you did you see me? Say, I expect it to go vertical now. We've put in more and more energy going to the upside, and it's now turning down. That energy should be expended to the downside. It should turn vertical, and it never did. It just it did it did swing back and forth, but it swung back and forth and got wider and wider. And so at some point it became obvious that I'm leaving too much money on the table. So that that's a we'll talk about that in some more trades coming up. That's some that's an important one for you. So one more last time. Had many light bulbs stay. Good. So Petra you look Petra like the physics. Rebecca, if you're still here, are you still here? Yes you are. Physics for your dark physics right on you, darling. Okay, send me an email. Um, so, again, we may change one day up in the class. My guess is there will it will Mondays will stay. Tough entry to find, but nothing is perfect when trading. Well, that's true, Jose. Um, Patrick's talking really clearly, though. But you go back and look at the tape, Jose. Um, I think one day is going to trade, going to change. I think we're likely to go to go to webinar, although we hang, we hung tough today. Uh, but Citrix is here, live with us, by the way. So, <laughs> hi guys. It, you know, it's funny how I get them here, and then when I get them here, it doesn't misbehave. So, uh, yeah, it's been solid today. So, um, I don't know. We'll see. And um, again, my doctor's advice is to change uh, some scheduling. So um, I think it, you guys can think about it, but I think it's important that I'm alive and well and happy. Uh, but you think about it, and uh, and we'll talk about it. We'll give it all week. Yo, ch clocks are changing for two weeks. Good. When you mentioned bringing my time frame in line with others, hadn't seen anything unless I missed it. Um, send me an email. Oh, okay. Perry, send me an email, please. Pretty, pretty, please. Um, yeah, no, I will do what needs to be done. I'm just, uh, you know, I, I'm, f I'm fighting with it. Okay. It'll probably take me a week to let it set in. But if I were you guys, I would just expect that we are going to have a one day change. I'm, I'm going to have to go with their advice. I don't, I don't really want to, but you know, they're right. CrossFit's going good. I, I, I'm, uh, I'm, I'm, I'm above lifting my weight now, and um, I'm doing good. Um, I was a minute late. What changes are on the table? Oh, I'm sorry, Kyle. So let me fill you in. <coughs> um, billing is due for those of you that haven't. If you've already written me, don't worry about it. Billing is due at the, you know, at the end of this weekend is when I'm going to release spots to people that are on the waiting list but I think at the end of this at this time when we when we add we're just going to freeze and then uh, on top of that um, my doctors have suggested that um, I make some changes in schedules so that I get more sleep uh, so that my week is more balanced and to do that um, it means probably 
one of your days is going to change. And we're also probably going to go from go to meeting to go to webinar because the Citrix people who are here today suggest that go to webinar is going to be more solid for what we're doing. So chances are that we're going to have a change in week. Great, th great, Ixan, but I'll still answer your question. So chances are that there will be a change in one day of one of your days of the week, and then also we'll be using. Yeah, I'm thinking, Lewis, I'm actually thinking Monday and Friday is what they're suggesting. Does that, does that, does that freak anybody out? So anyway, um, Don, that is one of the show, that is one of the possibilities that I might merge the two groups so that I only have two mornings. Well, you can, yeah, and yeah, I guess I guess by saying Monday and Friday, you guys have figured it out. Is that the doctors are saying, look, why don't you merge the two? Not, and then I'm, I won't, and I'll actually lighten up the number of people. And that'll be better for my health. Now, I, one day would be too confusing for everybody, but uh, we just do two days. So, you guys are okay with that? All right. I don't know. I'm still, I'm still, I'm still dealing with it mentally, and I, I was nervous talking about it this morning. But, um, okay, I'll thank you. I appreciate. It. I did get that email. I, and I appreciate the support, guys. So, Kyle, did are you good? Do you get it? You understand it? Oh, and the last thing, Kyle, was if you hear a kitty in the background, we have uh, Jordan, as in Michael Jordan. We have Jordan the kitty um, in the house now, and he's living in uh, the bad cave for the first week. So don't be surprised if you hear Jordan, especially tomorrow. Enjoy the cat, many giggles. Okay. <laughs> and you're also going to hear Lucy coming in and out for the first half hour every day because she's mommy, of course. So, And then in six weeks, by the way, you're going to hear another kitty. So anyway... Hopefully you guys will uh, be patient with me, and um, yeah, she's having a good time. And thank BJ, thank you, I appreciate it. And she she wanted to send you hugs. Um, and actually, you're getting a, you're getting a, a a set of pictures in the mail. But anyway, um, thank you all, guys. I hope this was interesting. I hope the physics uh, was it was actually particularly for Rebecca. Um, and as I said, I've been thinking about you all weekend, darling. And um, you know, I'll do another thing for you later on this week. And, uh, yes, I, we will be doing some physics with uh, an evening with the master. So, everybody have a good Monday, and uh, I will see all of you Thursday, and certainly probably at, at Wednesday at midday. So, I'll talk to you uh, later in the week. Take care, everybody.